Very few have heard of the case of Johannes Junius, the mayor of the German town of Bamberg in the mid 17th century. The town of Bamberg would find itself joining in on the European hysteria of witchcraft trials in the years of 1626 to 1631. These trials would see many accused of witchcraft, none the least was Junius's own wife, who was executed, as well as his colleague and neighbouring mayor named George Newdecker. Now, Newdecker wasn't going to go down as being a witch without kicking and screaming, and during his trial, he named Junius as his accomplice, which would lead to the mayor's arrest in 1628. To make the case about Junius even more damning, other members of the community, who were also accused of witchcraft, began to use him as a scapegoat and sought to drag his name through the mud as well. They would claim that he was a devil worshipper, would claim to have seen him at a sabbath, and would declare that he was in league with his deceased wife, who had helped him turn to the dark arts. Junius would deny all of these claims against him, but with the amount of accounts being spun about him by the so-called captured witches, the authorities began to suspect some truth in them. Junius was imprisoned and tortured for an entire week for a confession, a confession which didn't come straight away. Even as his flesh was pierced with thumbscrews, his legs crushed with vices, and he was subjugated to a form of torture known as stapado, or reverse hanging, Junius would not give up the information that was being asked of him. Reverse hanging would see the victim's hands tied behind their back, and they were suspended by a rope which was attached to their wrists. It would typically result in the dislocation of the shoulders. Weights may have been added to intensify this horrid effect, but the torture itself would not last for more than an hour. To exceed this amount would be to ensure death, for the torture was said to have been that painful for the victim. When he eventually did confess, Junius was a broken man. It had only taken a week, and yet he barely had mobility in his arms. In his confession, he claimed that he had renounced God in favour of the devil, and that he had seen 27 of his colleagues at a Sabbath. He went on to explain that he was facing financial troubles, and that this was his sole motivation for seeking the devil's aid. He claimed that through this seeking of the devil, he came across a woman, which he later identified as a succubus. Junius claimed that this woman had threatened to kill him if he did not renounce God, and that when he refused, the woman summoned demons of all shapes and sizes to swarm him and take turns beating him. It would force him to accept the devil as his new god. He would take the witch name of Crix, and was provided with a familiar named Vixen. This tale was corroborated by several local townsfolk, some of them who were accused of being witches, and so spouted a similar tale that they were also gifted a familiar for their services to Satan. Junius would go on to explain that he regularly attended witches sabbaths, and would attend by means of a giant flying black dog. At one sabbath, Junius would claim that the major demon Beelzebub made his grand appearance. In another account, Junius claimed that the demons encouraged him to murder his own children, but that he was unable to do so. For his disobedience, the demons were said to have beaten him within an inch of his life. While he did not sacrifice his own children in the demon's name, Junius did claim to have sacrificed a horse to appease them, as well as burying a sacred wafer so as to spite Jesus Christ and mollify the demons. So far in the Occult History Explained series, we've seen men and women accused of so-called witchcraft, and it's clear many innocent people were killed over these accusations. I suppose you might say it's debatable as to whether someone was or wasn't a witch, given their vivid confessions, but for the most part, we can assume that most witches who confessed to witchcraft did so in order to avoid or put an end to the gruelling torture they'd face. What makes Junius's case so special is we actually have a written letter where he explains all of this to his daughter, that he and the townsfolk are not witches, and they do not have magical powers. All of the confessions in Junius's case appear to have been made up so that he and his fellow accused in Bamberg could spare themselves the horrors of torture that they would face, even though they were innocent. Despite having his arms destroyed during the torture, Junius was able to write this letter just days before his execution. 
The letter was smuggled out of the jail by Junius' own guard, who was said to have known of his innocence as well, and this letter was successfully delivered into the hands of his daughter, Veronica. In this letter, Junius defends his innocence, claiming that the men and women who were also being accused of witchcraft alongside him would come to apologise to him. They would beg for his forgiveness at having condemned him, but that they were forced to name others in order to stop the torture and spare themselves the pain. In his letter, Junius recounts the horrors of said torture, and that his hands still shook at the time of writing the letter that took him days upon days to actually finish. While Junius was condemned as a witch by his peers, he too would be forced to condemn others, as he was led out into the street and made to point out other witches. He claimed to have refused to do this in the beginning, but that the threat of torture made him concede in the end. Through this particularly compelling section of his account, we can see how the witchcraft hysteria really began to take shape, with people being forced into accusing others, even though they were likely innocent. The letter Junius penned to his daughter reads as follows, but beware, it is a mighty long drawn out letter for a man who was barely able to write anymore. It's no wonder it took him so long to complete it. Many hundred thousand good nights, dearly beloved daughter, Veronica. Innocent I have come into prison. Innocent I have been tortured. Innocent must I die. For whoever comes into the witch prison must become a witch or be tortured until he invents something out of his head. And God pity him, bethinks him of something. I will tell you how it has gone with me. When I was the first time put to the torture, Dr. Braun, Dr. Kortzendorfer, and two strange doctors were there. Then Dr. Braun asks me, Kinsman, how come you are here? I answer, through falsehood, through misfortune. Hear you, he says, you are a witch. Will you confess it voluntarily? If not, we'll bring in witnesses and the executioner for you. I said, I am no witch. I have a pure conscience in this matter. If there are a thousand witnesses, I am not anxious, but I'll gladly hear the witnesses. Now the Chancellor's son was set before me, and afterward, Hupfen Els. She had seen me dance at Horpsmoor. I answered, I have never renounced God, and will never do it. God graciously keep me from it. I'll rather bear whatever I must. And then came also, God in highest heaven have mercy, the executioner, and put the thumb screws on me, both hands bound together, so that the blood ran out of the nails and everywhere. So that for four weeks, I could not use my hands, as you can see from the writing. Thereafter, they first stripped me, bound my hands behind me, and drew me up in the torture. Then I thought that heaven and earth were at an end. Eight times did they draw me up and let me fall again, so that I suffered terrible agony. And this happened on Friday, June 30th, and with God's help, I had to bear the torture. When at last the executioner led me back into the prison, he said to me, Sir, I beg you, for God's sake, confess something, for you cannot endure the torture which you will be put to, and even if you bear it all, yet you will not escape, not even if you were an earl, but one torture will follow after another until you say you are a witch, not before that. He said, Will they let you go, as you may see by all their trials? For one is just like another. And so I begged, since I was in a wretched plight, to be given one day for thought and a priest. The priest was refused to me, but the time for thought was given. Now, my dear child, see what hazard I stood and still stand. I must say that I am a witch, though I am not. Must now renounce God, though I have never done it before. Day and night I was deeply troubled, but at last there came to me a new idea. I would not be anxious, but, since I had been given no priest with whom I could take counsel, I would myself think of something, and say it. It was surely better than I just say it with mouth and words, even though I had not really done it. And afterwards, I would confess it to the priest, and let those answer for it who compels me to do it. 
and so I made my confession as follows, but it was all a lie. Now follows, dear child, what I confessed in order to escape the great anguish and bitter torture, which it was impossible for me longer to bear. Then I had to tell what people I had seen at the witch sabbath. I said that I had not recognized them. You old rascal, I must set the executioner at you. Say, was not the chancellor there? So I said yes, who besides? I had not recognized anybody. So he said, take one street after another, begin at the market, go out onto one street and back onto the next. I had to name several persons there. Then came the long street. I knew nobody. I had to name eight persons there. Then the Zinkenwort, one person more. Then over to the upper bridge, to the gorge Thor, on both sides. Knew nobody again. Did I know nobody in the castle, whoever it might be, I should speak without fear. And thus continuously, they asked me on all the streets. Though I could not, and would not, say more. So they gave me to the executioner, told him to strip me, shave me all over, and put me to the torture. The rascal knows one on the marketplace is with him daily, and yet won't know him. By that they meant Diedmary, so I had to name him too. Then I had to tell what crimes I had committed. I said nothing. Draw the rascal up. So I said that I was to kill my own children, but I had killed a horse instead. It did not help. I had also taken a sacred wafer and had desecrated it. When I had said this, they left me in peace. Now, dear child, here you have all my confession for which I must die, and they are sheer lies and made up things, so help me God. For all this I was forced to say through the fear of torture, which was threatened beyond what I had already endured. For they never leave off with the torture till one confesses something. Be he never so good, he must be a witch. Nobody escapes, though he were an earl. Dear child, keep this letter secret, so that people do not find it, else I shall be tortured most piteously, and the jailers will be beheaded. So strictly is it forbidden. Dear child, pay this man a dollar. I have taken several days to write this. My hands are both lame. I am in a sad plight. Good night for your father. Johannes Junius will never see you more. July 24th, 1628. In the margin of this very long letter, Junius had actually added, Dear child, six have confessed against me at once. The Chancellor, his son, Nudecker, Zanna, Hofmeister Ursel, and Hopfen Else, all forced through compulsion as they have told me and begged my forgiveness in God's name before they were executed. They know nothing but good of me. They were forced to say it, just as I myself was. What's so profound about Junius' letter is that you can see how unfair and unjust his imprisonment and torture was, and what a tragedy it is that many were forced to endure this sort of fate. Junius' persistence in creating the letter and for holding out against torture at all is admirable, and it's with his letter that we are able to really see the depth of the horrors that witchcraft accusations have had in history. It also shows us the disturbing levels of brutality inflicted upon innocence because of superstition and the way in which witch trials were manipulated to condemn those who didn't deserve it. As always guys, if you've enjoyed today's video, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Until the next time guys.